and let's talk about your international debut. A memorable tour of South Africa for multiple reasons, both on and off the field. First, let's talk about the cricket. You've often said that for cricketers, the first hour is enough to gauge whether you belong in international cricket or not. For you, it was the first hour plus that time when you successfully faced 90 miles per hour rockets from Nanty Hayward that was further cemented for you. So yeah. in true broadcasting fashion, can you provide a play-by-play -play of your mental state throughout that debut series, right from the point 10 minutes before the toss when you found out you are about to debut, to the matches yeah. themselves, to the end of the series? Can you chart out the evolution of a cricketer making their debut in international cricket? Oh, that's, that's very interesting. So, okay, again, a backstory to that, because mm -hmm. a lot of people uh, might not understand where I'm coming from, is pre-IPL and post-IPL, is a huge difference. So pre-IPL, yeah. when I was picked for <laughs> India, obviously the uh, the Indian players were not available as much for domestic cricket right, because they're playing for the country. So before playing for the country, I had barely faced India's top bowlers, like let's say Shri Bhai, as in Srina, Javagul Srinath or Zahir yeah. Khan or Ashish Naira, Ajit Agarkar, all these guys. I had barely faced them once or twice. And then, I went and played for the country and I was playing for the South Africans. But now post IPL, before you kind of play international cricket, you face everything both on and off the field. You experience all of that before you actually play international cricket because of IPL. So you're, you're playing against and with the best players in the world, the pressures, the spotlight, the fame, everything, you know, uh, you, you kind of experience all of that. So mm -hmm. pre-IPL, things were a little different. So, so there was always a doubt, at least in my mind, whether I was good enough or not to play for, in, for India or international cricket. So the first ball of, especially I'm talking about test match cricket, I think that's what you're talking about as well. So obviously, I mean, I was just sitting there and watching an absolutely magnificent partnership. Uh, Virendra Sehwag, Sachin Tendulkar. We were like, what, we were 20 for three or something on those lines, right? We were batting first. We lost three wickets. Was it four, three, I guess, very early. And then there was this partnership and, and, and that went on for a while. So that kind of helped me kind of relax a bit because when you see Rahul Ravid getting out and Vives Lakshman getting out, uh, you know, and, and SS Das getting out and you're like, God, what's happening here? You know, I mean, we're talking about these guys who playing international career for so many years. It's so difficult for them to handle this. How am I going to do this? And then obviously, I mean, that partnership kind of eased things down a bit. And then when I first went into bat and SRT Sachvai got out and I went in, Viru was making his debut as well. So it was him and I. And, and that also gave me a little bit of confidence in terms of Viru doing well, because that was his debut as well. So if, I mean, he had played international cricket before and, and he was mm. kind of, all, I mean, did all right before that. Um, and and playing with Viru is a different experience altogether because he sees the game in a very different way. It's like a 180 degree difference between me and you. We are poles apart. All right. He's watched the ball, hit the ball. Yeah. How does it matter if it's an edge or whatever, go off the bat? Yeah. I would be like, more worried about, so he would be, be worried about scoring runs. I would be more worried about whether I'm batting them well or not. You know, whether I'm looking comfortable, am I feeling comfortable? So it was a very different mindset. Mm -hmm. And he's, he wasn't bothered about whether he was looking all right or not. He was more bothered about, you know, scoring runs, however it came. And, but yeah, so so started batting and watching him and playing with him was was absolutely super. That that helped a lot as well. And then first couple of deliveries when I faced, I was like, hmm, all right, I think I can do this. Mm -hmm. But then you still don't know. You you know you can do this for a over or two or three, but you don't know whether you can score or not. I think my first things I got thirty four or thirty six. I think thirty four or something. And I and I looked. And I felt solid. I felt like, you know, technically I was correct. I wasn't hurried. I wasn't rushed. So that was, that was 
brilliant i think 90 i don't know whether he played that test or not so next test he played and he was at that point i'm the quickest in the world and and also he was um, not the most accurate so if you if you face an accurate bowler you know what he's trying to do so you can plan accordingly mm-hmm. you know if you see a field and you know what what kind of bowler you know, let's say Sean Pollock, you know what he's trying to do. If you have Jacques Callis, you know what he's, or Makai Nathini, you know, he's going to go wide of the crease, try and get it into you once. You know, things like that. But with 90 or with bowlers like that, who would just want to come in and bowl fast, you're not, you you don't have a plan for them. You just, you 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 play them on the go. So, and and I still remember, because by then, I mean, speed of, speed guns and all weren't that popular now it's like it's part of everyday broadcast now back then it wasn't that common and i still remember in uh, in in, in uh, port elizabeth they had a speed gun and and a monitor on the big screen they uh-huh. would be showing uh, the speed and 90 comes in bowls fast he's quick so i play him all right and then uh, I still remember it was somewhere backward point. So corner of my eye. And it's obviously you, you can't just look at it, right? I mean, it doesn't look nice. You just corner of your eye, try and take a glimpse of it. It's like 146, whatever it was in the 40s, mid 40s, late 40s. Uh, that's not bad. <laughs> and, then, and then it went up and it went up to 152 or something like that. And I was like, God, I'm good. I can, I can do this, you know. <laughs> So I think it, the whole journey was very gradual. So first it was like, am I good enough to just be here? So first innings was like, yes. Am I good enough to score? Yes. Then the other important thing is you're also, it's not just about you. You also want that respect from, from your teammates, from your peers in that dressing room. And I think that second test, the first test, obviously, I mean, because then the second test I was open, I was opening and, and obviously they saw something in me when, when sort of called me in his room and say, do you mind opening? I was like, I don't care. I just want to play. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you asked me to bat wherever, if you want me to open, I'll open. He said, okay, you're open. Because I went in, in the first test, I went in um, when the second new ball or I played the second new ball. And I was technically all right. And I managed the second new ball. All right. So they saw that and they thought, you know, he can play the new ball. And that was also kind of a, a, a word of confidence. You know, I can open and I can play the new ball. Uh, and then that innings and I was like, yeah, I can do this. 